We've already introduced ourselves, um, Phil and Lisa from East Midlands Theatre. I'm Mark, we'll be on the cam, we'll nice. and next week. Hi. So uh, we've reviewed two shows in, in the past. Um, now, obviously, you're about to play the evil white witch, <laughs> um, who has an endless supply of Turkish delight, I understand, and that likes to turn people into, um, into frozen statues, yes. Um, tell us what has been especially fun for you um, about learning this part and also the rehearsal so far. So what, what have you enjoyed? Obviously it's a serious job, but what have you enjoyed that's been fun about it? I think the, um, the promise of this production was, um, the timing of it was fantastic. So coming out of lockdown, um, doing a piece like C.S. Lewis, which um, occasionally has been done as a kind of children's story, understandably, we read it as children. But uh, the idea about theology um, within his writing, the big questions about the natural world, about religion, about supernatural aspects, purgatory, do any of these things actually exist? I think coming out of lockdown, this feels, this production feels like a very beautiful nod to all those big questions. It's very elegant, this production. I think Michael Fentiman, who actually, um, I saw his work first when he did Amelie in town, that won a lot of awards, understandably, because his his ability to tell a story in a kind of um, layered and abstract way, you're not dumbing it down for the audience and certainly for me I think C.S. Lewis if we remember back the writing was so strong that I remember reading it for the first time as a child but actually it was very complicated subject matter complicated enough for you to read it again now and get just as much from it and I think we often assume that children um, don't understand those big things but actually often that's when you feel you're most alienated um, and so it's a tale about um, alienation and being um, uh, just thrown to the winds. I mean, it was essentially about evacuees, but it's about displacement and asking questions about what's life all about. Um, C.S. Lewis uh, had a very sad life. His mum passed away when he was 10 years old, and I think his understanding of faith and religion were challenged. And he then spent the rest of his life trying to work out what religion was, um, one of his best friends was Tolkien, it's interesting, he's a devout mm -hmm. Roman Catholic, but, and um, C.S. Lewis being, you know, go back to Church of England, but he was fascinated by those things, and I think now this piece feels celebratory and kind of miraculous. We've all had quite moving times during this rehearsal period, because we've had cellos and violins and music. And We've got some other members of Amelie. Uh, yes. The cast members, the yeah, Michael the, director, yeah. are coming through. Is there much music in, in the show that's, that's played live? Yeah, there's a lot of music and he's found a way of designing the instruments with wheels and so the cello can almost flow in and out and around the stage. And beautiful um, actress, singer, musician who's in the show, uh, Rachel Dawson, who plays cello. Actually, sometimes as the witch is speaking, she's almost kind of understanding what's happening in her mm. heart and emulating that with a sound um, and that just elevates this to a new level really. And we've all had various different moments where we found this piece um, quite overwhelming. It's an overwhelming piece of work and I think the way that we've designed it, it feels like the natural world is rising. It's, it's, it's that more than primary colour, you know, children's TV. It feels like a very beautiful but quite mature tale. Is it a different take or, or uh, I know it's based on Sally Cookson's original mm. work at Leeds Playhouse, is mm. it a different take on that or would... Yeah, the production is new, it's so, new, it's, right. so it's definitely, it started its roots there, but it's very much its own production. Um, and I feel it's very, very loyal to, to the books themselves, certainly the smell of the story when I was a child, when I look at what I see on stage, it feels very much what I held close to my heart. The sound feels close to what I would have wanted to hear when Aslan roared, when there was a swell of love, the sound of the string instruments, just it's, it's very, very overwhelming. Um, you're perhaps best known as a television actor, mm -hmm. and particularly with your stint on EastEnders. Mm -hmm. um, I just wondered what it is that is now attracting you to theatre and what appeals to you about working in theatre? 
think before EastEnders, although I'd done some comedies and, and uh, stuff, I, I started off probably more theatre than television and then I had my children and uh, it really made sense for me to be in the same place for their education um, and that was a really interesting time for me. Uh, I think for me, I find, well first and foremost, I'm not a great morning person, I actually hate waking up in the morning. <laughs> I work really well at night time, my brain comes alive, I, I function better, I'm more creative in the evening, so theatre suits me for that reason, but also the way in which you tell a story from start to finish as the artist, I have a sense of control over the character. Often with TV, when you're having to replicate scenes over and over again and you shoot them out of context, it's a very, very different skill and, and it's just as difficult. But I think I probably find telling the story in its entirety in a chronological way more satisfying. I think we've got time for one more question. I'm sorry it's so Mark. short. Sorry. Mark, okay, Mark, Mark, come here. Oh, Mark, you haven't said anything. <laughs> if you had a wardrobe, yes. you could travel to anywhere. Where oh. are you going? If I could travel to anywhere, anywhere if I was in a wardrobe, I'm, I'm, I'd go back in time and I'd spend um, a week or a month with my grandmother. Um, yeah, that's what I'd do. Anywhere, where she, well, she and my father really. Um, you often don't realise what people give you, do you? So I, I, I'd go back and just have a perfect week where we'd eat food and be in the garden and she'd be able to see my children now and play with my animals and yeah, that would be heaven.